So as far as snow leopards themselves are concerned, they are much easier to see in winter, during winter or after snowfall. Um, that's largely because the um, the prey tends to get more complicated. So the, their prey species, the wild sheep and goats, the blue sheep, the ibex and so on. So they tend to congregate in relatively snow-free uh, slopes. And snow leopards also, I, I believe because of that, they have more restricted movement. Also easier to track on snow, you can see pug marks and you know their signs more easily. But definitely the best time to see them is in winter. Uh, we've been doing this long-term study in Mongolia since about 2008-2009 and we've tagged 33 individual snow leopards across generations. 33 did you say? Yes. Wow, okay. Yes. okay. Across generations. Yeah, it's unprecedented. It's like, you know, all the other studies ever done around the world put together uh, don't have as many snow leopards as we've been able to you know, systematically follow. And it's really, really important to be able to do that. I think the, the cats are generally resilient. They feel so direct changes in climate warming, you know, a bit of a seasonal precipitation and so on, they, they should be able to take that. But really, I think the issues are in relation to um, much greater exposure to pathogens. Um, that's not just related to climate change. These, these landscapes have traditionally been considered to be relatively, you know, um, to have relatively low pathogen diversity and abundance. Uh, largely because it's just very cold and um, you know the, the growing season itself is just a few months of the year and so on but with increased warming as well as you know this huge unprecedented levels of movement of um, of people and livestock and things like that there's there's great great um, threat now to disease like i was saying not just to snow leopards but also to livestock and people uh, what those diseases are or could be, it's hard to say. I mean, there's a lot of, we've done some initial research and there is a fair amount of, um, how do you say, um, the pathogens are already there in the system. And so, you know, when you do these reviews and things like that, it's just that it makes us more and the cats more vulnerable. There's also, I think, great risk of potential zona seas emerging from these landscapes because livestock the, the zoonotic diseases like like covid for example which is thought to have come from from animals uh well of course there are other theories as well but a lot of these zoonas is like AIDS, you know and um, sars and so on so there is a high risk also natasha because these areas are people and livestock and these wildlife are interacting rather closely and so you know it's you know, conditions are good for pathogens to make that jump from animals to people and vice versa.